Hello guys, today I'm going to be talking about the disadvantages of getting a tattoo. So, uh, some people might be asking, what is a tattoo? Well, a tattoo is basically a piece of art that is drawn on your skin. And it's made using ink. And ink can be toxic. And no, all pen inks are non-toxic, but tattooing can be toxic or non-toxic. And most of them are toxic. Not because it just kills you, kills you the moment you ingest it or the moment you have it on any body part. No, it's not because of that, but it can. But mostly, tattoo ink is made up of heavy metals dissolved in distilled water. Mostly lead, nickel, or chromium, all of which are heavy metals. And I'll talk about why heavy metals are toxic later in the last of the video. So, first of all, when you ha get a tattoo, you're basically injecting ink into your skin. And your skin has two layers, the dermis and epidermis. The epidermis is the outer layer of your skin, and it's basically a conveyor belt of death. No, 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 it's not that bad. It's actually useful because, well, what is skin? Your skin is the largest organ and is the outermost layer of your body. It protects everything. Although for the head, it might be the hair that is protecting you. So, but still, the skin is the largest organ and it needed to solve a big problem back when uh, humans started to develop skin. The problem was, we started to develop less hair, so we couldn't make our skin, well, less, uh, I mean weak. We had to make our skin strong. And the way to make our skin strong without any hair was, well, to make our skin into a conveyor belt of death. And by that, I mean the alive part of your skin begins one millimeter deep, and the above one millimeter is just dead trash. And how? Well, basically, one millimeter deep, when the alive part of your skin begins to start, there's just stem cells, which then uh, replicate and turn into skin cells, which just keep pushing and pushing above and above until they die, and then just shed themselves out. And that is also a reason whenever you stain your skin, you always see that after a few hours or days, it just seems like it was never ever there. And that's because it just got shed it out. And this was a huge advantage because any dirt or bacteria or viruses or any other nasty stuff that could get on your skin would just get shed away. So this was very good. And it was a total solution for having skin without hair because humans evolved from people who had more air, hair, like apes or monkeys, and they have a lot of hair. So we don't have hair. So we had to solve, uh, solve that problem and we came up with a solution. And the dermis is the inner layer of your skin and is the p place where everything that is main happens. So the stem cells are just protecting you. The main thing that supports the skin and gives nutrients to the skin and makes the skin alive is the dermis. And the dermis has blood vessels, nerves, lymphatic nerves, or any other thing that the skin needs to survive or any other organ, that, or the things that any other organ needs to survive. So it has all that, and that's what makes it the main part of your skin. And this part does not shed itself. It's permanent. So, if it's permanent, and it's part of the skin, and it's closest to the shedding area, well, that's perfect to inject ink. So, basically, your skin is a bit translucent. So, even if ink is inside your dermis, you would still see it, because there's just a one millimeter gap. You can obviously see it. And it's not that solid that it turns into just unseeable stuff. So, when you get a tattoo, in the, uh, in the first few days when you get a tattoo, it seems like, well, it's brand new. It's just very vibrant and cool. But, well, it's going to fade out a little bit after those few days because n the skin shedded it all out and now what you're seeing is the dermis ink. And here's where the bad part comes. Basically, all that ink created a huge disaster. Which each, with each piece of art, 
you kickstarted a drama with, filled with grand sacrifices and millions of deaths because it's cells. Millions of cells will die if you inject ink. So millions of deaths and your immune system stepping in to protect yourself from you. <laughs> so uh, basically what your immune system does is, well, it sees all the death and destruction happening because how do you get ink injected into your skin? You have needles and those needles are injected into your skin two times a second. That's very fast. And it's not just one, like an injection, it's half a dozen or sometimes even a dozen, which is 12 and six. So imagine getting 12 or six small, small needles, the size of skyscrapers for your cells, getting injected into your dermis. Perfect recipe for disaster. So that's why a ton of immune cells just run into the battlefield and start killing everything. Well, not killing everything because ink is not living and your immune system is only adapted to handle living beings because that's the only thing they have ever come across. Unlike recently, which now has tattoo ink. <laughs> so, well, they do still do have some living beings because, well, bacteria are still things and bacteria can get stuck to the ink or the needle. And although you might have chosen a responsible tattoo artist which dis who disinfected their tools, you are only able to get 99.9% of all bacteria and that 0.1% is still going to get into your skin. And that is what your immune system will be fighting. So after it finishes that off, it has to finish off ink. And they don't know what ink is. They just think that it's a foreign intruder and I have to kill it. So they do, but all in vain. They are not able to kill it because ink can react with other substances, but it's going to create a whole new problem. It's not going to just disappear. So your immune system gobbles up the ink and just dissolves it in acid. But it doesn't dissolve because it's not a living being. So basically, the immune system I'm talking about is the macrophages. And macrophages are the ones who gobble up everything and kill and release attack chemicals for, well, reinforcements. And macrophages are the beginning of your attack. Without them, there will be no signals and other mega attackers like uh, neutrophils or fibroblasts, they won't be able to come if there are no macrophages sending out signals. So the macrophages come, they gobble up ink and the ink just gets trapped into their bodies. So basically, macrophages are types of white blood cells that have little arms, like tentacles. And they are tentacles, just cell tentacles. So they gobble up the ink, just like they would gobble up any other enemy, like bacteria, and they just try to dissolve it in acid, but it doesn't. So what they do is that they just gobble up ink and get it trapped in their body. So perfect recipe to die. So that's why they have a reduced lifespan and they only live a few hours instead of a few days. Yeah, micro macrophages have a pretty long lifespan, but because they have ink in their bodies and not energy or food, they just die faster. So that's why your body needs a continuous supply of macrophages and other immune cells to stop the ink from spreading. Because your immune system is not able to win this fight because it's fighting against a non-living being. And they won't be able to kill non-living beings because they can't be killed and they can't be dissolved or thrown out of your skin because it's in the dermis. So what they do is not lose. So basically, they just trap the ink in the only prison that they can build themselves. How themselves? Well, that's because they have clumps of cells that just surround the ink. They basically make a real prison. But, you know that cells die. And when cells die, they have to be replenished by a new set of cells going to the ink. So if this is going to happen, what if there's a real disease that your body needs to deal with fast? There are many cells that are handling the tattoo ink and that's, uh, that's why you are going to get much weaker after you apply a tattoo because all many immune cells and almost all the immune cells of your skin are just trying to hold up the ink and patiently waiting for another supply and for themselves to die.
So that's another supply and for themselves to die. So that's why you get significantly weaker and you are not able to replenish your immune cells because they just go to the tattooing. And because of that, you get weaker and you are more susceptible to having diseases. And speaking of diseases, this is where we get to the part of toxic metals. You remember, remember when I said we'll get to heavy metals later in the video? This is the part. And it's not the last yet, but almost. So basically what happens is that when there's a serious disease, you take an MRI scan. And MRI scans, well, they're magnetic. And you know what magnetism does? It attracts metals better than any other object. You will notice that a magnet will stick better to metals and even if it's a powerful one, it won't be able to stick on non-metal because only some can stick to non-metals and even they will just fall off if you give it a snap. So that's why if you have a magnetic field inside the MRI, then you have a problem. Your ink is made up of heavy metals and it can be made up of other substances, but it's really rare. And most famous ink uh, tattoo artists only have lead ink or nickel ink or chromium ink. So, if you have only heavy metal ink, well, it doesn't matter. Whether it's liquid, solid, or gas, the magnetic field is still going to attract the metals. And you know what will happen? All of the ink is gonna try and get pulled to the mag magnet. And basically, if you're trying to get ink out of your dermis and through the epidermis without the support of your body for shedding, what you get is an extremely deformed arm or body or chest or whatever, and then you will basically just lose a few years of your lifespan and you'll probably get cancer. Yeah, so that's why you should never apply a tattoo. And another reason is because, simply, tattoo don't last forever. Because ink can escape the tattoo because your immune system will not be able to gobble up every single piece of ink and they won't be able to protect every single ink, every single particle of ink from going out somewhere else. So they flow around your body and they catch a ride and they can spread around your whole body and well basically you have an ink infestation, not a mouse infestation. You have ink in your whole body and because you have a lot of junk around your body your lifespan is reduced and you have a high risk of getting cancer or heart failure. Another thing about the MRI thingy is that, well, MRI scans will not be able to de detect the problem properly because if they're trying to suck up the ink, then they will be busy on that and they won't be able to actually find the disease that you are in the MRI for. So that is why the MRI won't be able to detect anything and even if it does or tries to do well, the ink is going to stop them from detecting because basically what an MRI does is that it relies on charges of the disease to detect any disease. It basically has a huge line of code that tells you to detect. So basically if that thing has a certain charge, it will detect that and say that it's this disease or it's cancer. So if that's all under the ink, they won't be able to detect it and what if that place is the starting point? Well, they won't be able to detect it and you will die. So that is why you should never ever ever get a tattoo because first of all, that art is not going to stick around forever. And, and if you want to look so cool, then just carry around clothes with very good art or just carry on expensive things. So uh, I hope you liked the video and I hope you know the consequences of getting a tattoo and how it restricts your immune system from uh, paying attention to real diseases and so bye